Hi, this is John Kanalopoulos from our center here in Athens, Greece, the Laser Vision Amateur Surgery Center. We can see here a cataract that otherwise looks relatively normal. See how the lens is firm with the iris, macula is good. Uh, this patient is monocular, the other eye is amblyopic. The best corrective visuality is 2200. So we're marking our uh, axis, astigmatic axis here at uh, 25 uh, degrees, uh, my incision at 135. Uh, and this is our uh, beveled incision at 135, and we'll do a passion piece, it's just one millimeter, a small pupil, despite psychoplegics. So we're gonna use some epinephrine to attain uh, further dilation. The fact that the pupil moves with the um, uh, fluid tells me that it's going to stretch, stretch quite a bit. A few inadvertent bubbles here, but uh, once we use our uh, magic gel inside the eye, this code by uh, Alcon, my favorite as it gives the maximum field protection. We'll see that now we're dealing with a completely pupil diameter. So everything here looks uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, Methacellulose on the surface to get better magnification. And uh, But look here in my uh, continuous uh, servilinear serv capture rex is that when I tear the capsule, there is wrinkling on the periphery. Now, for those of you who are beginners, uh, the most experienced and burned, uh, crashed and burned surgeons know that this tells us that the zonules are unstable. So despite the fact that there's no phacodonesis, Greek word for shaking of the lens, we know that we have a very unstable capsule bag. And you can see this throughout. Um, and you can see also that I'm very careful since that wrinkling does not give me stability of periphery capsule to make the tear uh, in the speed that I usually do. And we can see that the right eye that we're dealing with has a deeper chamber that is also suggestive uh, that uh, the lens may be sitting more posteriorly than it should. So I'm maintaining a good large capsule rexus here, larger than uh, my normal. My normal is about five millimeters. This is closer to six. It's central, I'm gonna do hydro dissection and you guess what the next move will be, definitely. Uh, use a uh, tension ring. Automatically have my team pick up a uh, iris fixated lens standby in case we lose the whole capsule bag. Uh, I'm using a 13 millimeter uh, tension ring instead of 12 because I want maximum stability of the periphery of the uh, capsule. And here I'm injecting with the help of a Kuglin hook the ring um, under the uh, anterior capsule very careful and I'm stabilizing with my Sinsky hook here, the lens, so not to move a lot, but you can see how the whole lens capsule system uh, moves. So this is high stress uh, phacal surgery. I'm um, splitting the uh, cataract. Fortunately, the cataract is not very dense. It's a medium for our clinical experience here in Athens, Greece, but we can all appreciate how opaque the lens is and how drastically the vision of this uh, lady, uh, this uh, 72 year old lady will improve to note that, as I mentioned before, this is essentially a monocular patient since the other eye is at best at uh, 2200. Um, so the stakes are high. I invariably break uh, very often to reinstill uh, this code. I'm using here my uh, hook to uh, bring up the uh, this large uh, uh, hemi or quadrant of the cataract. I'm going to use my uh, uh, leisure time here to place this code under the lens and thus reduce the stress on the capsule bag and also protect my cornea endothelium. You can see here how careful I am. This is the second tube of viscoid that I'm using in a specific patient, but well worth it. As, as you can see, it will enable me to remove this lens without um, uh, any significant manipulation on the capsule bag. And um, you will also see in the preceding, um, in the uh, moments to, f to follow rather that I'm going to be very careful in removing any uh, residual cortex. I'm going to leave some minute residual uh, cortical remnants in the periphery to uh, create a Elsnick uh, uh, and somering ring further stability. So I'm very careful here how much I'm pulling the, uh, the cortex. I do not want to pull the tension ring with the cortex and completely tear off the uh, zonules. You can see I have a relatively clear center. I'm filling the capsule back with methylcellulose. And now the tricky part, we have a torque lens. We use the total cornea power at four and a half millimeters here by sine fluke tomography, the Pentacam, into our IOL calculation formula with our go-to lens, the Acrosoft um, uh, spheric uh, 
uh, toric lens um, and you saw the calculation data um, now the important thing here is I want to make sure that when the lens is placed in I'm not pushing on the capsule bag and tear the superior or the closer to my injector uh, part of the bag so I'm very careful I'm pushing the lens down gently to have it unfold as you can see here in the bag and then I'm, I will also very carefully with the Kuglin and the uh, Sinsky hook rotate the lens to the um, desired axis and um, attain a, a case um, that has some residual cortex that I did remove before here hydrating the incisions um, stayed clear cornea big surprise the next day we'll see although the pupils uh, a little dilated from the inflammatory effect uh, the patient is already 20-25 uncorrected of course due to the pupil dilation the first day but the following day uh, we have improved to 2020 you can see here the pupil is uh, far better smaller very happy patient happy surgeon thanks so much for your attention this is John Canlapa signing off